Hi, it's Rob from the Bush and Bulkham. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to paint a Necron Lord. If you'd like to support the channel, our coffee and Patreon pages are linked below. Now on to the video. So the first colour we're going to use is Citadel Retributor Armour. It's a nice deep gold colour. I'm going to work on some of the little details on the kind of skirting around the back here. So I'm going to give it all a nice coat of Retributor Armour. The miniature itself has been sprayed with Citadel Rune Lord Brass. Well, if I'm honest, the spray does seem to come out somewhere in between Rude Lord Brass and Canoptech Alloy. So when you put both colours on, you can't really see too much of a difference sometimes. Now I'm going to use some Canoptech Alloy. I'm going to use this to paint the head and the armour on the shoulders and the back. like so. Next, a little bit of Citadel Moot Green. I'm going to use this to paint the blade of his scythe, and also the two blades at the bottom of it too. This will give us a nice base for that green to white, like dark green to white blade edging that you get. Like so. I'm going to use some Citadel Araman Blue. I'm going to use this to do all of the circles in those areas of gold on the skirting that we've just done. I'm going to be painting these up as gemstones, so there's going to be a short video on how to do that start to finish. But each of these will be painted up as gemstones, so if you saw the picture on our Instagram a couple of weeks ago, this is the guy that we painted the gemstones on. One of the things that I started doing years ago on a Nihilak Necron Lord that I painted because I was going to go with them and it didn't work on any of the other miniatures for years so I went with the new Dynasty instead. So now we're using a little bit of Vallejo White here using this to do the eyes and all of those little globes and half spheres that he has like sort of on his underarm his forearms I should say underneath on his forearms he also has them like by his belt there's a couple on his side he's got the resurrection orb in his hand as well give all of them a nice coat of white I'll do this for later on when we come to make them glowing next up it's Vallejo Black I'm going to paint all of the sections of him that aren't armour plates so like his toes the bits on his legs where it's between the calf and the ankle you got the same kind of bits on his forearm you've got the big spine going down the back of the armor plate as well and the the spine going up from the inside of that bronze pelvis so there's quite a few bits his knees and his elbow joints too his neck the back of the skull quite a few different bits that are all going to be painted in this vallejo black but then we're going to use a little bit of iron hand steel the only real bits that we're going to be painting here is two parts of the scythe, or two sections of the scythe half. So you've got this part and then a bit towards the bottom. And then you've got these little bits that look like a, a coil of some sort. So I'll just paint them with a little bit of lead belcher will do, iron hand steel. Pretty much the same colour anyway, but either or will work. Next up, we're going to start shading using some Citadel Apothecary White Contrast. So we're going to paint this onto all of the white orbs. This will sink into the recesses so that when you paint over with the Tesseract Glow, you will have that nice darker area around the outside of the orb, and the central, central parts will be a lot brighter. I just want to use some of that on the... tubing which is towards the top of the side too. I'm going to use Drakenhof Nightshade and this is going to be going onto 
each of those gemstones on that skirty bit at the bottom and also on the loinclothy metal tabard thing that he's got going down his front too. Notice on the left there there's a few of the gemstones that I haven't actually coloured there on the thinner part. So next time we come back that'll be painted with Araman Blue and then shaded with Drachenhof Nightshade 2. Once you've got all those done, it's on to the next colour. Now I'm going to use some BL Tan Green. And this is going to be to use on the sections that we put the Mook Green on earlier. Also put on those crystals and doing that like kind of like a dark stone. Once more, I couldn't remember which colour I used for dark stone. It turns out it is the Drachenhof Nightshade. I believe. But try three different colours on that. But paint those crystals whichever colour you want. Because I was playing around with them to see which colours look the right. Now I'm going to use some Citadel Null Oil. I'm going to use this on the small sections that we used the Iron Hand Steel on. Like so. Now it's time for Citadel Agrax Earthshade. I'm going to use this on all of the gold. So you've got the little bands on his front here, you've got a little band similar on his head. I've done part of his shoulders, part of his head there, and you've got that big skirty bit at the back, like his metal robe. Now it's Citadel Cryptek Armour Shade Gloss. We're going to use this on all of the Rune Lord Brass and Canoptek Alloy. This will give it that kind of old weathered look, but still maintain the shine that you'd have from the metallic. I noticed here that I haven't actually done the back of his foot like the heel. Or the toes with the black, that's an oversight, and I will go back to those before we start highlighting the black and paint them in. Now, going back to the gold, we're going to use Citadel Retributor Armour once more. When you're reapplying these colours, you want to think about where the light's coming from, where it's going to catch, and where you're going to have areas that are shaded. Now we're going to start highlighting the gold using Citadel Liberator Gold. So once again, think about where the light's catching it. You want to highlight those areas the most. On areas where there's going to be quite a lot of light catching it, you do want to add a little bit more Liberator Gold to give it that extra shine as though the gold is getting brighter where the light source is hitting it. As a final highlight, we're going to mix in some Vallejo Model Air Chrome with the Liberator Gold, and we're going to do some final highlights with these. Once again, this is mainly edge highlighting. You can also going to use it like you did with the Liberator Gold, anywhere that's catching a lot of light. You can use it as a final highlight in those areas just to give it that really good shine. I'm going to use a little bit of Vallejo Model Air Chrome on its own. I'm just going to use this to do all of the Necron symbols on him. He's got them on his forearms, on his chest there. I think there's one on his staff too. But any of these little symbols just give a coat of the Model Air Chrome and I'll make them stand out nice and shiny.
Now we're going to work on the gemstones. We're going to use a little bit of Citadel Ironman Blue. And you want to be painting the crescent that covers around half of each of the gemstones on the bottom left hand side. If you put it on and you feel it doesn't really show up as well as you'd like it to, just add a, another little layer on that and brighten it up. But following the same thing, just getting the crescents on the bottom left on each of the gemstones. Now we're going to add a little bit of Vallejo white to the Araman blue and we're going to paint on a crescent about 50% of the size of the previous ones. You're going to paint that in the bottom left of the gemstone again. As you can see here, slightly off screen initially. But now coming on so that you are left with a little bit of that Araman blue on the top right hand edge of this smaller crescent. Now we're going to use a little bit more of Vallejo white and mix that with the previous Araman blue and white mix. We're just going to do a little crescent about half the size of the previous crescent we've just done. As I say, I did this originally on a Nihilak Necron Lord years ago. It was when the Codex came out, not the last one or the one before, but the one before that. And that one came out, I bought some Necrons, painted one of them up, and never painted any of the others. So they're all getting rebranded. Now we're just going to use some pure white. We're going to do a really thin line down the left hand side and then we're going to do one or two spots depending on how many you want to do on the top right of each of the gemstones. I'm just going to reapply some of the white to the spheres which are around the Necron including the Resurrection Orb. takes a lot of time but it is worth it. it looks absolutely fantastic once it's finished but it does take quite a while to do now i'm just going to use a tiny little bit of citadel drakenhof nightshade and this is just to go over the top right of any of the gems where maybe the spots of light are too big or there isn't really that dark spot maybe there isn't enough shade from the initial application what you can do is use a little bit more drakenhof nightshade and just paint that in the top right corner and that'll darken down those top right corners of the gemstones while the bottom left is nice and illuminated. So back to the armor now, we're going to work on all the parts that we didn't really touch other than the shade and start reapplying the Rune Lord brass. So obviously the sections that we don't want to do here is the head, shoulders and the back armor because they'll be Canop Tech Alloy and we'll do that with the next one. So all the Rune Lord brass areas you want to be doing the areas that will be catching the light, so like the top of the thigh, the top of the foot, some areas on the calf and the top of the arms slightly out of shot here which is quite annoying sorry about that but you can see here where it's been reapplied and the areas where you've reapplied the rune or brass you want to then reapply the camoptech alloy on about 50 percent of that area we're also reapplying the camoptech alloy on the areas which just had that color on so the head shoulders and the back armor too. Now we are adding some Vallejo Modeler Chrome to the Canotech Alloy. This will lighten it a lot. And you can use this to do edge highlights and pick out details and things like that. As this isn't a particularly new Necron Overlord, he doesn't have any of the damage that the newer miniatures do. He's pretty intact. But he came with the Imperium magazine. It's a quality miniature, so I thought I'd get him painted up. Now I'm going to use some Vallejo German Grey. I'm going to start highlighting the black areas. So if you need to reapply any of the black to the miniature, maybe you've gone over with a bit of the 
brass or one of the metallics or something like that. If you have, you just want to go over that with a little bit of black and then start on the German grey. And as before, you want to think about where the light's highlighting or catching those black sections of the miniature and highlight them with the German grey. For the final highlights for the black areas of the miniature, you want to be using Citadel Mechanica Standard Grey. You're just going to give this some tiny little highlights to pick out the details, mainly doing edge highlights on them. Or if it's a smooth area, just doing some highlights where you think that light would catch a little bit more. You can use this, as I say, to pick out those details with some nice edge highlighting. Once finished, that will make the shape of those black areas quite distinct, so you can see all the details there. Now I'm going to use a tiny little bit of model air chrome, and this is just going to be to do like the pistons. You've got one on the outside of each leg, and one on the outside of each arm too, or the underside of each arm, depending on which way you're looking at it. There's also some by the neck there. We can't really reach them too well on this miniature. Those little ones on the underside of the arm should be no bother to get. Like so. I'm going to use Sithdel Mook Green. I'm going to start reapplying this to the blades of the scythe at the bottom and the top, making sure that you leave that BL Tan Green shade in the recesses. I'm going to start working on the highlights for this and get that so you've got that dark green to light green going on. I'm going to jump to the Citadel Tesseract Glow and you can see there's a few little bits where I've used Tesseract Glow already failed to press the record button so we're going to go back and just go over those parts and show you how to do the tesseract glow now the way this works it tends to pool much like a shade does and leave you with a lighter area on the top of each globe if you want this brighter you can do a couple of layers of white on the top area where you want it brightest to get that glow really really vivid if you want to darken it like i've done on some parts especially that resurrection orb you can use a little bit of bl tan green and maybe put a little bit of a pan on there. But that said, the apothecary white contrast going over those white bits initially will work fine too. So now we've just added a little bit of white to the mook green, and we are just highlighting alternate sections of the side. So you have the lower portion of the blade, then the top portion of the blade, then the lower portion. There's like a blade's edge running right the way across the bottom of that side. I think I split it up into four here. So you can see there you've got the bottom, the top, the bottom, the top. Adding a little bit more white now. And we're going slightly smaller area once again, so that you've got the previous two shades showing through. I'll link up how to paint these kinds of weapons. here so that you can watch a tutorial on exactly how to do this with no focus on any of the parts and it goes start to finish on one of those Scorpec destroyer blades. Once more adding Vallejo white to the previous mix. We're going in slightly less again so you're leaving the previous layers on either side of it. That one there is a lighter area right in the middle of that bit that's cut out from the blade, so there's not really going to be that much there. I do try and add a little bit on either side of that cutout, but it's much of a muchness to be honest. Going to add a little bit more white to the previous mix and highlight this once again. You can see the lighter tones really coming through now. 
So you have that moot green to the lighter shade of green. Again, a little bit more white going into the mix. Doing a little more highlight on this one. It's only a very small area now. As you can see, it's pretty much all white. But there is that hint of green left still in there. Like so. So to do the darker sections, we're now going to use Citadel BL Tan Green. And where you've been left with those big sections of Mook Green, you want to leave a little bit of Mook Green at either end, and then darken up that middle section with some BL Tan Green. Now you can't use quite a bit of this in one go. You don't want it to pull too deeply and be too much of a stark contrast between the Mook Green and the darkened green. But you can apply quite a bit of it if you have a little play around. Worst case scenario, and you put too much down, it's not a problem. You can just put Mook Green over that section again and start again because it is only the Mook Green which is going to be beneath it. So use this to darken down those Mook Green sections. Once again, we're going to do another layer now and do a slightly darker bit in the middle, like the opposite to what we were doing with the white and the green. And this, by pulling that on a little bit more, gives us those darker shades so that you'll have that dark to light green to white on the blades of his weapon. The final thing to do is using a little bit of pure Vallejo white. We're going to do edge highlights over every section. You've got lots of little details on there. So we are going to edge highlight those sections. We're also going to add some white to the center of all those lighter shaded areas. And we're just going to pick out all the details and the edges of the side. What this will do is make all those details stand out and really, really bring it all together. This is the completed Necron Lord. Really happy with how it's turned out. There's some nice little glowing bits. Really happy with how the blade turned out on the scythe too. And also those gems on the bottom of his skirt there. Really pleased with how this guy turned out. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. And if you have, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future content. Also, think about subscribing to some of our other social media linked below. Thanks very much. If you like the channel, please consider supporting us at our coffee and Patreon pages linked below. Thanks very much.